Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you to my subscribers, welcome to the newcomers. I hope you like what you see, and if so, join us, be part of the family of this journey to create these beautiful pieces together. And feel free to ask any questions. I am here to help you and to answer. I might not answer right away due to the time zone difference of different countries. I am in Europe. And um, we are going to continue. I have um, a table cloth that goes also inside of the living room. You know, those small little uh, corner tables that you can pretty much put any decoration. I have a TV on top of mine. So it's a round, small one. You should know what I'm talking about. And because I did the last dollies, uh, the ruby dollies and the table runner, um, for the dining room and for the living room so I can bring it all together. I also need to do the tablecloth for that um, table. So I thought, why not, and recorded. Some of you might have these little tables and might want to do um, the tablecloth for it and have it all matched up the same way as the dollies and the table runner ruby so the stitches will be the same we're just going to go up on rows so i'm going to start it off and then you can go on from there because it will be the same thing so this is 100 percent cotton size four ply now my four ply not necessarily means it's the same thickness or thinness as yours you have to check within your country which one fits best for you how big you want your tablecloth you know the thicker you go the bigger the piece the thinner the more stitches, the more rows, it's more delicate, of course, um, so it's a little bit more work. I like to work with this four ply because it's not too thin, it's not too thick, it gives me just perfect enough um, sizes for my patterns. I don't have to overwork rows, and it gives me the beautiful pattern just the same. Now, just a little reminder, this is part of the Ruby uh, table runner and also the doilies that I did for the living room should bring about these are the multicolored in the uh, burgundy pea and not peach pinkish wineish color with some white mixed in it now um we're gonna get started I'm gonna do this tablecloth the same uh concept as the beginning of the of the um, the doilies, obviously I cannot do it the same concept as the table runner because the table runner is long and the doilies are round, had to be different in the middle. And of course for the tablecloth has to be the same thing, just to match it up. And I'm going to put probably two rows of flowers um, on it, which I'm most probably going to use also this pink, pink peach, if you want to call it. Because it matches up the pink peach that I have on here too, so I might have to might do a row of uh, this and then some white around it, and then use this one for the other flowers. I'll see as I go. I always change my mind. Another thing that I want to remind you: if you find that my videos are too fast for you, you can click on the three buttons up here, go on settings, and slow down the video to the speed you would like. Um, and please don't forget, if you're a new subscriber, hit the bell notification for new uploads. And also give it those thumbs up on your way in or on your way out. It doesn't matter. It helps to circulate the video. So needle number three, four ply, and a pair of scissors you will need. Let's get started, people. Thank you so much, everybody, for your support. So the first thing we're going to do, like we did with the dolly, we're going to do the magic, the magic circle. If you can't... Uh, still do the magic circle do if you're doing uh, four ply my four ply is exactly like Aunt Lydia number three in cotton if you're doing a smaller uh, with smaller thread best uh, well for tablecloth it wouldn't be the best it would, the best would be Aunt Lydia number three for the tablecloth but for the dollies or even if you're doing the table runner number uh, 10 would be good on Aunt Lydia so one two and three and four. Four because three going up is a double crochet, one for separation. We're going to do 12 and double crochet in here 
and separating by one chain. So this is the same beginning as the dollies. Nothing changes and we're going to go up uh, quite a few rows. I don't know how many rows yet because I need to figure out what size I want that tablecloth to be on that small table. But I'm definitely sure we'll go up at least 20 rows if not more. So we'll go with the flow like they say, right? So anyway, basically just do your 12. Drop my, my cone. Okay, so you pull on your magic ring, close it up, and then we're gonna tuck it up afterwards. So once you have your 12 in here, one, two, three, Inside of the space, we're going to do one, one chain again. We're going to go on top of the double crochet. Inside of the space, we're going to do one, one chain. And again, double crochet. Inside of the space. And double crochet inside of the space, one chain, one inside of the space. So we're gonna have groups of two now separated by one chain separation all the way around. Okay, so we reached the end, we slip stitch on the third space. We're gonna go over to the next double crochet. So we're gonna slip stitch to the next one and we're gonna go up three chain. That would be a double crochet. Inside of the space, we're gonna do two double crochets. So now we're going up. So we start with one, two, now three. And one double, uh, one chain on the second double crochet, double crochet, and two inside of the space. One chain, skip one, going to the next one. One chain separation, skip the first one, going to the next one. And we're gonna have two double crochet inside of the space. Skip one, going to your second one. One chain, skip one, go in the second one. Oops. One chain, skip one, go in the second one. And I'll meet you at the end. So I've closed in third space with a slip stitch. We are going to row four. So row four and on, we're always going to skip the two first double crochet. So we're going to slip stitch and we go to the third one and one, two, and three. And inside of the space here, we're gonna do three double crochets. So we're always gonna skip the first two double crochet. Now we're gonna do two chain. We're gonna skip one, two. On your uh, third one, double crochet. And inside of the space in between, we're gonna do three. two and three. So we're going up on, we started with one, we have two, now three, and now four. The only difference is we're going to keep skipping the first two now all the way until the end of our rows, um, no matter how many rows you're going to do. So on your third space, double crochet, and we're going to do two inside, uh, three inside of the space. Sorry about that. One, two, chain separation. Skip first, skip second, go into the third. Inside of the space between the groups, we're gonna do three 
double crochet. So we're going to have the amount of groups now of four double crochets. Skip first, skip second, going to the third. And continue doing yours, and I'll continue doing mine. And I'll meet you at the end. So I've reached the end, and now we're going to continue on. We're going to skip first. Well, skip, we're going to slip stitch, I should say. We're always going to skip two. We don't do the first two from here on, and we do three chain on the third one. Double crochet inside of the space. We're going to do three. So now we have a total of five. So we are always going to have th uh, three double crochets now inside of the um, space because we're always skipping two we're always going to be adding on to the other ones two chain separation always on your third space we're going to have double crochet so we have two double crochet already and three more inside of here so it's going to equal your five because we're going up on the groups two chain Skip one, two on your third one. Double crochet, double crochet, and three inside of the space. Now it's going to continue like this for the next um, few rows. Now I don't know how big I'm going to go yet at this point, so I cannot tell you I'm going to do 20 or 30 rows, and I don't know how big you want to go with your tablecloth. You can do this as big as you like and um, and see um, the length you would like it. So I'm going to go up quite a bit and then when I'm ready to add some flowers on, then I'll come back and show you. You could always advance the video and see where I'm at, of course. Um, so I'm going to continue. Just remember to always skip the first two and always add three inside and always two separation. So I'm going to continue on my rows. Uh, I don't know how many I'm going to do yet, but once I'm ready to add some flowers on, I'll come back to you on it. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to tell you uh, how many rows I have done because I've been measuring the table, obviously. And I've also changed color. I put a bit of cream because the sofas, the table's next to the sofa, and I have cream on the sofas with brown. Even though I'm going to do the flowers with some burgundy, um, it comes out pretty good on these colors too. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen in white. Eighteenth row, I started with the um, ten color cream, if you want to call it. And uh, so that's the 18th row that I started the color. Now on the, okay, so 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. There's 29 rows I have here. Now I'm going to start doing the flowers. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. Instead of six petals, I'm going to do it with eight petals. Okay, because it will be easier to continue on the rest of the rows to finish up the measuring of the tablecloth. So I'm first going to use the, see if I can get more lighting here. Give me a second, I'm trying to get some lighting. I'm going to use this pinkish peach, if you want to call it, because I have some of the pink peach mixed into the burgundy. I hate the lighting on here. My goodness. Okay, you guys, so we're going to make the magic ring. I've already added on one flower to see how it's going to work out. And 
inside the magic ring or you can do six chain stitch if your stitch is too wide to do only uh, four or five we're going to create um, six groups of four double crochet that's including the three chain going up tighten a little bit here two chain separation There's another group, two chain. So we're going to do six groups of four. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Close it in on third space on your first one. So we're going to leave it about like that. We don't want it too tight so it doesn't pull too much on the flower either. Hopefully this will work out. And I'm going to make it a knot in one of them here, just to make sure that none falls apart. And put through a few more. And I'm going to give it a little knot and put through some of the loops back here and hide some of the thread. Okay. slip stitch we're going to go where we have the two chain separation we're going to do five double crochets inside of the same space two try to hide my thread at the same time Five double crochet into the next space. Now we're going to do three double crochet here and we're going to tie it into the pattern. So let's go into the first one here. Um, any square back to back, close it in with single, and we're going to do two more double crochet in here because it's a total of five. Next space. So we're only going to tie into the pattern one paddle, and we're going to have the other ones tied to the sides. Next panel. Okay. 
and next panel. And next panel. So we have five double crochet, six times. Inside of the two chain separation. Come in the first one and lock it in with slip stitch. Cut our thread. And there you have it. I'm going to create the second one and I'm going to see how much distance it's going to be to add them. I'm going to add them. Hopefully we can on these two paddles. If not, I'm going to have to change the game again. Okay, you guys. So I had to re-put the flower because it wasn't um, doing the proper way. So I have a few on, but doesn't matter if I have a few on. You're going to start yours on the first stitch, right? On the first stitch here. Right after the square. And after you do your three double crochet and then tie it with single and then you do two more on the next space because I was attaching only um, in one paddle and I decided not to so it can stay properly in there so we're doing five double crochet per paddle creating a paddle I should say for space in between the the groups of four double crochet on the previous row as you can see here I was attaching this the uh, second flower only in one paddle and it was not working out properly so I took it down then you close in your first one make it a knot I'm just going to tie it a bit in the back because I'd like to get it over and done with. I don't want to come back to it. So we'll be skipping six space in between them to attach them to the pattern. That means skipping six double crochets. Okay, so the next pedal we're going to attach it, um, the next flower we're going to attach on these two paddles here. Okay. Makes more sense and it uh, stays flatter on the pattern looks nicer. So we'll do the first one. Try to hide my my thread while I'm at it. And whatever's left over we cut off. So you do your five single crochets, you're going to the next one and you do your three um, 
double crochet, I should say, not single crochet, sorry. Three double crochets here. Now, we're going to grab back to back and we're grabbing not the first one next to where we attached. We're going to grab this one and one, two, on your third space. We're going to close it in with single. Come back into the same space and do two more double crochet. So you have your five going to the next space. Create your three double crochet again. We're grabbing the first petal right after we attached into the pattern again. One, two, and three. And close it in with single. And do two more double crochet on the same space. Again, into the next space. And do your three double crochet. Now we're going to count six space back to back. Not counting from where we attached. We're going to count from the space right after. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you close it in with single. And you do your two more double crochet going to the next space and you do your five double crochets to create your paddle. So we have one, two, three, four, five. You go into your next space and you do your five more and you cut your thread. Close it in, slip stitch on your third space up top. And tidy up loose ends so you don't have to come back to it. I like to make a knot to all my patterns just to make sure nothing is coming apart. But you do whatever is best for you. I like to do it this way because like this you're secure when you're washing or you're giving it to somebody and they're going to wash and you might tell them that this is hand wash but some people just don't understand that yet you know they will put these type of things in the washer I mean, maybe you can when in a bag you know those like laundry bags and you put the cycle in gentle probably that way but I don't. It doesn't hurt to put inside of a, a bowl with a little bit of soap or a little pail or whatever way. Anyway, so it's going to be like that. And we're always going to skip six. Now, coming to when we're going to skip six, obviously we're going to end up over here. Now you're going to count one, two, three, and four. Remembering that these two are two chain stitch so that would be considered two space so one two so one two three four and you have five and your sixth so you hook it up on your sixth because you have four here plus a two chain six okay and that's how we're going to add it. And then obviously you're falling right back into the same space here. And if you look further down, again, the same thing. We're falling back into the same space again. So we'll just continue to add the same way, counting six space from the back as you're doing back to back. And you continue on. Now, I'm going to do another one to show you at the end the last one how we're going to attach both putting one here to attach both to, uh, together okay so let's say you've reached the end of your pattern and you have one more to put here so you'd grab your second one here 
one, two, and three. Close it in with single, come back, do two more inside of the same space, go into the next space, create your three double crochet, grab your paddle from your flower, one, two, on the third space, close it in with single, create two more double crochet in the same space to finish up your paddle. Next space, create your three double crochets again. And you're going to count your space, not from where you put, put in, but the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six. On your sixth space, you're going to close it in with single. You do your two. double crochet into the next space you're going to do your three double crochet you're going to grab your paddle back to back one two three you're going to go back inside and finish your your paddle you're going to do two more Next space, create your three double crochet. Go into your flower back to back and you go into the third space. Close it in with single and finish your paddle with two more double crochet. And come in third space on the next paddle on your first stitch. And we close it in. Tidy up loose ends. And then cut the excess thread off or yarn, whatever you're working with. I'm going to make it my knot here. And go in between the stitches here. And cut my excess off. And there you have it. So I'm going to finish up mine and I'll meet you at the end once we've finished adding all the flowers together. Okay you guys, so I pretty much finished all my flowering and I have 65 little flowers. Now we're going to continue um, with the cream, tan, coffee, latte if you want to call it. And on this row, we got to do, um, we're going to do chain stitch so we can have an, e uh, an even, so we're going to go right into the middle. So one, two, on the third one, we're going to do single, try to hide my thread, one, two, three and four. I'm going to see four is enough. No, five. Six. Try six. If I need more, I'll add more chain stitch. So I have six because I don't want it to be pulling either. I need to add a little bit more, I think. Six, okay, seven, eight, let's see, eight, I think we'll try eight, one, two, try to turn this camera back, 
So I want to try that again. I want to miss out on any stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So one, two on third space of the flower, single. I have to add more stitch from it because I don't want it to be pulling. Okay, so let's try 10, 9, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's more like it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, and three. So we're going to do this chain stitch all the way around. I'll close it in with single. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to count one, two on the third one single. So this is what we're going to do all the way around. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so we've come to the end and we're just going to go into where we have our first single. Now we're going to go up three, one, two, and three. We're going to do double crochets all the way around. I'm trying to think maybe it's best to go inside of the stitch. And you can do it from here if you'd like. If you want to go in it, I think I'm just going to do it this way. It will probably look nicer. So you're supposed to end up with. 10 obviously if you have 10 chains one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten I'm not going to do a stitch on here. Sometimes you just have to play with patterns this way. Okay, so I'm going to go right over to the first stitch, slip stitch. So we're going to just, because we're not going to do on top of the single, one, two, and three. And this is how it is about creating patterns. You have to try different options to see which one you like better, which one you think is right, you know, until you're pretty much satisfied with it. Now, like I said, you don't have to go into the stitch if you don't want to. You can just go right in through here and then just pull your, your double crochet out if it's easier for you that way. I think it just gives it more definition this way, I think. It will be a little bit longer to, to do because you have to go on each let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. And ten. I'm gonna go right into the next one over. I'm not doing I'm not doing over the single. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, 
six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we'll do it that way. Like I said, you don't have to go inside of your stitch, you can do right over. I'm going to go in because it gives it a nice definition, nice line. I mean, I'm going inside, I should say, not over. Okay, so I'll meet you at the end. Double crochet all the way around. Okay, you guys, so we pretty much came to the end. We're going to slip stitch on the last one. And we're going to cut our thread. We're going to tuck it in. Try to hide it here behind some of the loops. Try to give it a little knot here. As you know, I like to knot everything. Like this, we're secure that nothing ever comes apart. Okay, so now that we got our little border done, and I want to incorporate some of that burgundy, peach, pinkish in, but I might not have enough of this color, but I do have the burgundy color, so I'm going to try something out and take it from there. Okay, you guys, so I'm coming back in with the white. I'm going to grab the first stitch here where we have going from one side of the flower to the other. Oops, that's not the white. We're almost grabbing the cream. We don't want the cream. We want the white. Well, cream would have done good too, but... Since we didn't have too much white on there. So we're going to close it in with single. One, two, three. Actually two, sorry, with the single makes three. It's like a double crochet. And we're going to do three more inside of the space here. So we're going to have groups of four. Try to hide our thread at the same time. And then we're going to skip one, two, on the third space, single, one, two, and back into the same space. We're going to create groups of four again. So we're going to do this row the same way all the way around, one, two, on the third space, single. So you're going to have it like this, one, two, three, uh, two, sorry, because the single makes three. So used to always giving three, right? Usually when we go up. So four double crochet. And then skip one, two on your third one. Single. And we're going to do this all the way around. One, two. Three. And four. And next you're going to count one, two on your third space. Now if your stitch is wider and bigger, you can skip four spaces if you'd like. I think this is good enough for mine, so I'm not skipping more than that. But if my thread was thicker, I probably had to. One, two, because obviously they become bigger, right? Two.
So we're almost done. One, two, probably another row or so, I think. Now if you have to give three, three chain if you're ch if you're too tight and it's too small, you want to give it enough height. One, two, three. Now if you need to skip more, because we don't want it to curl up either, right? We want it to be nice and straight. So if you have to skip to four spaces, you go ahead and do that. I'm going to test that out to see if mine needs four. So I don't have it too loose here on the pattern. One, two, three. Let me see. Try that again. One, two, three. I'm going to give it three chain as height. Make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to skip again. One, two, three. And four. Let me see. Yep, I think I'm going to do four. So we're going to do four. I think it's best. And if you have to give it three chain here from the beginning. So one, two, three on the fourth space. One, two, and three. So I'm going to give it three chain also so I can have a little bit more height. Two, three, and four. One, two, three on the fourth one. I think that's better. One, two, three. See, that's the whole thing with creating patterns. You go with the flow. Wherever the pattern brings you, then you work with it, not against it. One, two, three, four. So this is perfect. Okay, so we're going to do it like that by doing four double one, two, and three to give enough height. We're going to do four double crochet. And we're going to skip one, two, three. On the fourth one, we do a single. And like this, it's not furled up and it's not pulling. It's just perfect. I'll meet you at the end. Okay, everyone. So we pretty much finished doing. And as you can see here, I had um, one, two, three, four. So I had one extra, actually. So I had like five. So just jump over. Don't worry about it. It doesn't change anything. So I'm going to grab the multicolored. I'm going to come right in the corner where I have started my first um, stitch here. I'm going to grab both because I don't want to grab only a edge. Oops. Okay. I'm going to do a single. And we're going to do exactly the same thing as what we did with this row. So three in the same space here in the corner. We're going to do three more. So we're going to have a total of four. Double crocheting. Try to hide my thread here. Okay. And you're going to do one, two. Or is it one, two? Let me see. Let me see. Actually, no. I grabbed this wrong. I have to grab it from the top. Right on the edge. Not from the single crochet, but right on the edge on the fourth one here. So, single. Try to hide your thread, one, two, and three. And in the same space, we're going to do the groups of four again. Three. On the same space, four. And we're going to come on this edge here. Close it in. 
in one, two, three, and again. The groups of four. And then two, the next one. One, two, and three. So we're going to do this all the way around. Grab the corner here, single, one, two, three. In the same space, two, three, and four, and then to the next corner, and it's going to be repeatedly like this all the way around the same thing as we just did on the previous row. The only difference is we're doing here on the corners. So I'll continue yours, I'll continue mine, and we only have one more row left, and then we're done. Our tablecloth. Okay, so I'll meet you at, just back it up a bit so you can... I'll meet you at the end. Okay, you guys, so I pretty much finished all around. And we are doing the last row. So I've tried doing this to see if I liked it, and I did like it. So very simple. You would start off, let me just finish here. You would start off right on the corner on any one of the edges. So you'd start with the... Um, with a single and you go up one two and three come back in the same place and close it with a single now you see the first double crochet here because we have four one two three and four so we'd go on the first here well before I do that two chains sorry go on the first here And we're going to do a single, trying to get more light here, two chain. Again, go in the corner in the first double crochet here, single, one, two, three. It's like doing a peacock without going into, into the uh, corners there. So it's going to end up like this. Again, one, two, and three. You come into the first stitch again and single one two into the corner single one two and three back in the same place single hope you get good lighting here okay one two chain come back into the first double crochet there pull it a bit one two come and grab your corner here on the first double crochet right on the corner single one two three and this is the last row people so this is what it's going to look like the edge so we got some 
um, we have some pink and some peach and everything else matching into the colors as you can see. Get more of a close up with these ones here too. Because camera doesn't do its justice really. You know, but it's really, really nice and it matches the last um, table runner and the dollies I did for the living room. So, you know, since it's an open concept, it's just perfect for it. So, again, single, one, two, and grab the corner here. Single, one, two, and three. And we're just going to come back in the same place and do a single. So we're doing like a little peacock, if you want to call it. Again, you come back into uh, one, two, chain. Come back into the first one. Pull it up a bit, just so you can have this little effect all around. And two chain back into the corner here right in the corner and this is pretty much for this tutorial people I hope you enjoyed this tablecloth it is simple but very nice perfect for any little table for the living room or side table in your bedroom if you have one you know just like a little coffee table also perfect for that uh, it's, it's a good size of tablecloth. I will measure it at the end and I'll leave the measurements of this tablecloth on the description box along with you know the type of thread and so on and so forth size of needle number three and all that. So I hope that you like this tablecloth and I hope the newcomers you become part of this journey by by subscribing please don't forget to give a thumbs up on your way out it's important for the video and I appreciate every single one of you I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being there with me and creating these beautiful pieces and um, if you are subscribed don't forget to hit that bell notification to get notified for the new uploads that I do weekly. I will have the picture reviews and a little video with it on my little table at the end. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much, everybody. God bless. And until the next video, bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you.